everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atu here, and I am super, super psyched to welcome you to interview round four with Deanna Perrazzo. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm super psyched to have you back. We were kind of saying before we started recording, a lot has changed since I had you on in April, so this is going to be awesome. I'm psyched. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I feel like the appropriate question is, how are you doing? Because you really do seem so happy. You seem to be thriving. So just let people know how's, how's it really going. Yeah, honestly, like, I feel like a completely new person. And I feel like um, right after we talked and all the crazy stuff happened and, and like, people being fired and stuff, like, I just emotionally just felt like, whoosh, <sighs> and, like, I feel like a, brush, like a breath of fresh air. I feel like, um, like my love for wrestling has been, like, reignited and um i'm just happy i'm really really happy we're gonna kind of get into that new love of wrestling in a second but yeah. real talk like how badly do you want to be on supermarket sleep <laughs> oh, i couldn't sleep last night and i was watching youtube videos on my phone because i watched all of the videos on netflix um and i keep saying like if i'm ever gonna be on the show that's what i need to get or i need to get the garden hoses and the pots and the pan like I will never be on Supermarket Sweep, but <laughs> I love it. I really do find that everyone is taking this time off or the downtime to binge watch a ridiculous amount of shows. Like I was doing an Instagram live the other day and they're like, what docuseries have you watched? And I think I named like 15 or 20. It, it's bad. So is there anything you've been really enjoying or diving into kind of binge watching on that end? Um, I just watched Kingdom on Netflix. Um, oh. And it has like Frank Grillo, it has uh, Nick Jonas, um, like Matt Loria, um, Jonathan Tucker, I think his name is. And it's basically just like an MMA show going through um, these people's like family life. And it's like tragedy and triumph and um, very Sons of Anarchy feel. And obviously everyone knows that I will never meet, like match my son, my Sons of Anarchy love. But uh, this was really, really good. And um, I'm, I'm still, like, mourning over it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it suck when you finish a series and then you're like, what do I do? Like, where do I go from here? <laughs> yeah, I, I literally said to a few people yesterday, like, I don't know how they do this to you. Like, they get you invested and in love with these people like they're your real life friends. And then they just rip them from you. <laughs> Is there anything you've been scoping out that you're thinking of diving into next or you're still really feeling like a big punch to the heart right now? Um, I feel like I go through like phases of like um, actors. So after I watched Sons, I wanted to watch everything that Charlie Hunnam was in. Um, and then uh, so now um, like Matt and Jonathan did Parenthood, um, which was a series I think on Netflix. It's not on Netflix anymore. So I've been trying to find a way to watch that. Um, cause it's apparently like really sad and, and in that same realm. So I'd love to watch that. <laughs> You're just like super happy in real life, but you just love the super sad shows. Oh don't God, Yes. I feel like there's just like a piece of me that loves to cry, but like it never comes out. So when I watch <laughs> these things, I just cry and cry and cry and I love it. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about big changes at the beginning, and there's been a really nice little addition to your life, and that is how you recently defeated Jordan Grace for the Impact Knockouts Championship, and now hold the title. So how's life as champ treating you? Because it really is, it's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, it was like career changing for me. I I kept doing media for Impact, and, and the one thing that they said, like, what was your goal? And it was to be a champion. Um, you know, in Ring of Honor, we created a women's championship, but I was never the champion. I, I never got to that point in NXT. So to kind of be brought in and, like, be trusted um, to go right for that championship, and I didn't believe that I was actually winning until it happened, like, um, was just, I, I took that such to heart. And, um, you know, I tweeted yesterday, like, the lineage that goes with being the Knockouts champion and the people that held that championship in the past, like, isn't doesn't fall on deaf ears to me so um I, i'm like so excited to like carry this division right now and so excited to continue to explore who i am and what i can do and uh bring myself to that next level to, to like live up to that lineage you know i mean tell me a little bit about the moment that the arm bar was put into action and you knew a few moments from then like you were going to hear the bell <laughs> from that championship. like you had such raw and genuine emotion on your face so yeah. what was 
running yeah. through your mind in that moment? Or was anything running through your mind? Because I know some people <laughs> just like, ah. <laughs> Okay, honestly, all day, I, like, held back tears. Um, because, I like, wrestling, really, in my real life, is the only thing that gets me, like, super emotional. Um, and I just knew, like, this is going to be such a big moment for you. Like, enjoy it. And on the way to the venue, I started to tear up. And then we did, like, the celebration, and I started to cry. And I thought, like, I'm going to win, and I'm going to break down. Um, but like, you know, we get time limits for the matches and we were like right on the dot with time. So it was like, the ref was like, get up, raise your hand, beauty shot. And I was like, I don't have time to celebrate. Um, so it was more of just like, there, I didn't think anything. I was just listening to like, okay, we, we, we need to get it off the TV. Um, but afterwards it was just like, oh, I did it. It's over. Cause I was so nervous. I can imagine you crying for a really long time afterwards. Cause I think won the championship I saw a tweet and you're like I can't stop crying and then the morning after I remember seeing it in my feed and you're like I'm still crying <laughs> <laughs> yeah I yes it's like once I got to the back and I got to cool down and talk to everyone and you know like to see Madison and um you know talk to to Chelsea and to Sean Bennett and to Britt and you know people that were just like you, you did it and you're alive and it was awesome um, I just found a room to myself and just like let myself break down because I again was just like so happy and, and the build up to it like all that week I was such a nervous wreck and and um, I was trying to like get in the ring and train and make sure like my cardio was up to par with where it need, would need to be and like just visualize this match because I wanted it to be so great and I felt like it was my like coming out party kind of um, because I put such a target on my back leaving WWE so um, for it all to come together in just like this perfect fairy tale moment was just amazing. That makes me so happy because I've mentioned this before in our previous interviews, but like seeing you at Rise and Shimmer, being literally in like a bathroom with you when you're on a call with WWE one day and you're like, it's happening. And then like, you know, finding out what happened there, seeing you sign with Impact. Like, I feel like it's been these crazy little pivotal moments in your life. And it's like, to see it all accumulate to what it has. I'm just so, so happy that you're like happy oh. and enjoying it so awesome <laughs> thank you so much oh of course <laughs> I will summertime it's obviously bikini season and you're taking that little motto like full on it's like you've just like new found confidence and it's so lovely to see so just kind of being with you since you know we've talked on and off camera but for like where did this kind of come from and is it because of all these little life changes or like you know where did that stem from I think like if I had to, like, accredit it to someone, like, Chelsea Green is my best friend. And she is, like, confident in her body and putting it out there. And I think it started as, like, we wanted to do VXT. And um, really why it almost became a tag team was the social media push. And the way we were able to, like, brand ourselves on our own on social media. So doing, like, that first bikini shoot was something we did together because it was like we can sell merch and branded as VXT and um I saw the pictures and was just like this is a new me as a whole and I was comfortable and confident and and the more I've been able to do it like just the more comfortable and confident I get and I feel like in wrestling like fans are quick to judge you on your body type or your imperfections and um for me it's, it's just kind of like a way to be like this is who I am and at, at first I was nervous about sharing that with the world, but now it's like, take it or leave it. I've been through the worst of like being rejected and, and be, you know what I mean? Like there's um, so much I've been through in the last year that has just taught me to like be confident in who I am and, and the choices I make and um, not look back. Yeah, I had so much crap thrown my way from fans and I'm not even dressed in gear. Like you've seen what I wear at shows. Like it's not crazy revealing, but like regardless of what we're wearing, people always have something to say and it's you know not always the nicest of stuff yeah. so I can like, from it. like I remember doing my first bikini campaign and I was like oh is this like a really bad thing to do like what are people going to think and then when you start to realize like it doesn't matter as long as your friends and loved ones are like positive who cares so yeah. it's also exactly. really thank you it's, it's just like we have to take control of these situations and it's a great way to brand myself. It's a great way because the fans that do love us want this merch. Um, so that helps, you know, but like, it, it's just a way for me to get comfortable in my own skin and it's taken, you know, years and years to get to this point, but I'm here and I, I love who I am and I love 
um, where I am in my life. So I just need to celebrate that. And it cracked me up because you even said how you're thinking about uh, ditching the wrestling and getting into bikini modeling. So I know it was obviously a joke, but I mean, why not do both? <laughs> um, Sports Illustrated swimsuit search is coming out, so we might end up having to vote for me because I want to be a swimsuit model now. <laughs> so that's kind of like the next goal, you know, have the championship. Now it's like, I need to be on covers. <laughs> yes, exactly. The virtuosa needs to be, um, we need to transcend wrestling. We're going to be a swimsuit model now. <laughs> Well, I'm really excited for everything that's on the horizon for you. And I just going to keep doing like better and even more awesome things. So thank you so much for, as always, coming on here, shooting the breeze. It has been awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Anytime, you know that uh, I'm always available. So <laughs> thank you. everyone, this has been the awesome Diana Perrazzo. I am the interview queen, Alicia Toot. And check out aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. We'll see you all next time.